and welcome to Tights TV. Uh, got Daniel. Uh, it's been a while, Daniel, but nice to have you on. And Ryan as well. Uh, Ryan, uh, thanks for joining me. I know it's been busy week and work and everything like that. So managed to get beer eventually. So, yeah, come to you, Daniel. I mean, uh, me and Ryan touched upon it briefly. You know, uh, disappointment from from the midweek game. Yeah, it was a draw and everything like that. Uh, so before we get on about Oxford, what were you, what were you take on Oxford? Uh, sorry, what were you take on Lincoln game before we get to Oxford, Ben Daniel? Uh, well, it was one a disappointment, obviously. Wanted a win. Wins, you know, drawings are on off at this stage of the season. Um, I think, though, I mean, it it goes back to a, a problem. I think this has been a problem consistently all season. The team's really sitting back. And we've been struggling to really break through that back line when they're on form. Um, and I know I've, I said to this to a friend, it's mathematically possible that we can cap, we can get the... To, into automatic promotion places, but the big difference and something that we can't deny, even though we've had a great season, is that we can't break down. Uh, we can't break down that back, back line when they're playing deep and and where Ipswich and Plymouth, they always just find a way to win. And mm. and I think they showed that on Tuesday, Plymouth last minute winner. I think that's twice they've done that in the last few weeks. The Ipswich also had a late winner. They managed to come back from 1-0 down up, uh, against Port Vale. So, uh, yeah, I mean, this I think this is just an issue. And, and I think that's what separates us. Um, that's what separated us from top, two, from top two this season. Even But who knows, we might still manage to pluck it out of the bag. Uh, but, yeah, so overall disappointed. But there were some positive signs in there. I think Adam Phillips played well. Uh, I think he was trying to get... He was trying to. He had a testing run into the box, and he was trying it out. But I think that I think to be fair to Lincoln, they, they were very well organised on the night, and uh, we we just didn't have that that sucker punch just to even to just just to just kill the game and and get that first goal. Because I think if we got that first goal, I think it would have opened it up and. And uh, we could have gone and got more, and it could have been an easy win, but it's fine margins, unfortunately. Yeah, good, good tech on it. I mean, uh, Ryan uh, touched on that about Phillips as well, being, you know, probably a standout player at night. So, Ryan, I mean, fine margins. Uh, we come to Oxford game, obviously, we're going to get on to Oxford game. We're back at well, you know, you look at Lincoln. Um, they were I'd really not to play for, probably mid, mid table kind of team ish. Drawn yeah. probably more games in <coughs> than hotels. I'm looking at Oxford like now and we're in 20th and they've drawn, 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 lost, drawn. Um, yeah. So again, they're going to be fighting to stop the league. We are trying to, you know, over end, which is uh, thankfully a right scenario. But how do you see us, you know, how's it going to pan out this game? Um, Against it, Oxford, Ryan. It, well, it's got. To, I mean, regardless of what happens above us, like, like, like I agree with Daniel. I think, I think automatics are gone. Um, mm -hmm. We still need to go and get three points. You know, we want to make sure that we're secured in that position, which we pretty much have because Peterborough are nine points behind us, aren't they? But it'd be good to get a secure, uh, you know, one of the top playoff places, either third or fourth, uh, and, and and obviously win the game just in case the other two slip up. But this one is. You know, we do need to be winning. If, I know you've just mentioned about the form there, Neil, but they've not they've not won in seventeen games. Mm. So, in fact, they haven't won since we beat them away in January. So, I think last yeah. time they won with Ipswich at home when it was that when that fog coming. Yeah, well, well, last time they won the game, um, and they've, you know they've not even won one since they had my change of manager. So, you know, they, they they're definitely there to be beaten for me. Um, I don't want to keep saying. We need to be making a statement after a poor performance, after a you know slightly poor performance, which we seem to be saying a lot in last in last few week. You know, mm. seems to be a bit bit of a mess. Um, but yeah, we definitely need to be going and getting three points and put us at least try and put us in a position to make Tills United a bit of a a bit of a um, a bit of a, a mad one. You know what I mean? A bit a bit of a noisy one at Oakwell because they've got a really tough game of it, which at, at Peterborough, as we touched on last time. Mm. So there's a chance for them getting beat there, and then we're only three points behind them, aren't we? So it could make for a bit of a, a bit more. I'd, I'd just hate it for a big game like that to be a bit flat if we're not if we're nowhere near them, kind of thing. Mm. But mm. We'll have to wait and see what happens. It's kind of out of our hands, that, isn't it? But we, we, I think we need to go and put these to the sword at Oakwell, which I'm sure we will, because we've been 
we've been brilliant at Oakwell, haven't we? I think we've got best record, winning record since '95 mm. or something like that. Is it some at Daft? Yeah. We're eight in a row. So. Yeah, uh, Daniel. I mean, good points. What uh, Ryan's made for you, you know, just keep winning every game as we can. I mean, there's a few reasons why. Obviously, you never know what's going to happen up top. But we just do it. We play his own game, but you never know. Let them sort out. Uh, Ipswich and Plymouth uh, Wednesday have got their own issues with that. Like uh, overnight, at one point, we're winning or losing, and it will look you know, you know, in a better position for us at as Barnsley. But again. I get where Ryan's coming from, and probably you might agree or disagree on this, but I think you should be playing your strongest team as well and going in and taking every game and treating every team with respect and don't expect, oh, well, you know, they aren't winning the X amount. So we'll rest a few just for Ipswich game coming up. Again, we want to be going in right mentality with this game uh, against Oxford. Completely agree. Completely agree. You, you, you can't do it. You, it's... It's going on the pretense. I mean, if we say rest, rest as players, we're going on pretenses that these playoffs, we're going to, this team's going to come in and there's a there's a team that we've now rested and they're going to come in for those playoff games and then it's going to be, we're going to blitz everybody. It's not going to happen that way. I, and, I'm, and I hope it does, obviously. Um, <laughs> but it, it's not going it, to, the truth of the matter, you want, to have a strong run going into those playoffs. You want to be going yeah. into games when you've just... If, if we go into those games and we beat an Oxford, um, Oxford, Ipswich, Peterborough, their confidence is going to be sky high. Peterborough's a great side. Ipswich are a great side. Oxford mm-hmm. are fighting against, relega- uh, fighting against relegation. But if we come out of that game playing really confident, good football, win 2-0, let's say, you know, and... Your confidence is brimming going into that, and it's going to need it. We've got Bolton in the, there's, so there's so there's going to be four sides in play, four sides in playoffs. So you've got Sheffield Wednesday. Well, maybe. Mm. 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 Uh, you've got <laughs> Sheffield Wednesday. Um, you know, it's looking like let's just take the tables here. You've got Sheffield Wednesday, us Bolton, and either Peterborough or Derby. Yeah, those are all strong sides. Um, and you're going to need to have they're going to need to know what they're doing on the pitch they're going to need to gel together and they're going to need to have a, a you know a, a spring in the step going into those games um, so resting resting players I don't see the sense in it personally um, mm-hmm. so yeah that's my take on it yeah. I, don't know I mean right me. just what just what Daniel was saying there about teams, but you know what we're looking at, we're looking at Wednesday Barnes, of Peterborough, Bolton, and then possibly Derby scrapping it out with Bolton. I mean, Wickham 68 points, probably a bit too gone, but you never know if one slips up. So yeah. you're looking at taking your eye off at ball kind of thing, you know, mathematically it's still possible for automatic. I know it's a long shot, like there's a lot of twists and turns that's going to be ahead in the next couple of, I said next couple of weeks, next couple of fixtures, next couple of, like, couple of games for a lot of sides. We'll probably determine your top two kind of thing. Um, is it a matter of would you rather play? And I'll come to Daniel on this as well after after you. Would you rather be playing your home tie second? You know, away first, get the right yeah. away, come back to what well because we touched on it briefly about uh, yeah. the also game, didn't we? I think there's plus and minuses for both of them, isn't there? You know, you, you know, if you get the second tie. Then you've got the extra time and penalties at home if it comes to it. But also, you know, there's that argument to say that if you're the home team first, you can get off. If you get off to a two, you know, get a decent two goal lead, hmm. you, you know, you definitely need ascendancy. If you remember when we played Walsall, that was the case in 2016 where we, we, we were, a, you know, we were, a, um, we were at home for the first leg, weren't we? Because we, we finished sixth, but yeah, we'd done them 3 0. So the tie were over before it even got to their place. So. Hmm. I think there's pluses and minuses. Honestly, Neil, I don't think it matters that much. Um, mm. I suppose in, in grand scheme of things, I, I, I thought. I think if I have to, if I had to pick, I probably say I'd prefer to have you know home side second. Because even if you've lost first game, I know that Oakwell will be an absolute fortress, and there's there's more. You know, I think it feels like there's more on it when it's the second leg because there is going to be a decider that evening, that night, whatever it is that day, mm. and. 
we'll get behind him, and, and I think anything could be possible then. So if I, if our, if our, if push comes to shove, I, yeah, I prefer a second leg, which is going to be anyway, isn't it? It's going to be anyway because we're, we're we're going to be we're going to be third or fourth, aren't we? So we're going to be at home second leg regardless. True. Yeah, fair point. Yeah, fair point. Daniel, I mean, you're taking it. Would 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 it matter? Uh, like what uh, Ryan said, via when you think about Walsall game, we were at home first, and we've been more or less put game, more or less save in our favour. What's your take on that? I, I, in in all honesty, Neil, I, I think it won't make a difference to to me. I mean, I've seen playoffs, but the thing is with the playoffs, they're a lottery. It doesn't necessarily mean how you've performed all season. It means and how you've managed to hit the ground running when you're playing those four or three games. Um, and I think that's that, that's what makes it so difficult. And that's the reason why there were probably an emphasis on Barnes fans really trying to push us for this automatic promotion brace and end Duff as well and, play, and players wanted to... And obviously, players put, their effort, put the effort in as well. It would just landed a bit short, but... Yeah, I mean, 2006, I remember we played Huddersfield at home, lost 1-0, ended up winning at their place in probably one of the most weirdest games you'll ever see, ever, um, yeah. if anybody yeah, remembers. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then, you know, so we so we played at home and it backfired, played against Swansea at home, that backfired. Uh, well, it backfired at first leg. We managed to win away, but it orders field. Yeah. But then it backfired at Swansea. Then you've got Walsall where it came. We won mm. three, and then we, I think we annihilated them at their place as well. You know, yeah. and, um, but uh, so yeah, it, from experience, Neil, it, it don't make any difference. What what matters is which team turns up, basically, and. Produces produces that bit of magic, and I think that uh, Phillips Phillips is going to be that person to show that bit of magic magic in playoffs. If there's anybody, yeah. he's our uh, Nardiello slash um, Adam Amel. I think this uh, yeah. in this playoff run. Um, no so, pressure, man. No pressure. Yeah, no pressure. Hey, listen, it could be a that'd be a big turn of events, wouldn't it? Hey, uh, you never know. You never know. You never know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, fair point. So, you know, good, uh, you know, uh, good uh, insight, good talk, and good uh, debate about that. I mean, I think as well. I mean, fantastic away support. What Barnes have been having as well on road. Uh, fantastic away. Um, so wherever you know, whichever ground we'll go to, we'll make some noise and. Just hope we get a fair share, a fair, a fair share of tickets as well. Uh, yeah. like I said we, uh, Swans a game more recent. We understand with COVID and that. We, we, we're a shame that more fans won't. Unfortunate, but let's hope with this time around. If we don't go up automatic, we'll have a we'll have a fair amount of fan, uh, fans for that. Uh, so yeah, going back for Oxford game. I mean, I, I know there's been a lot on social media and the club have put one out as well about uh, two people what sadly passed away recently. Uh, the more recent one at uh, Lincoln City. I know we're on about doing minutes of applause. Uh, probably uh, Jason Farewell, uh, you know, probably give more information on, on either on day or might be in programme or whatever, but there's going to be some minutes of applause for two people that's passed away. We're unfortunate. Uh, not, never, a, never a nice thing going to a football game and... Unfortunately, not making it home. And even Michael Duff's come out and it's also me as well. So, thoughts are with uh, family, friends and loved ones. Um, one straight always a red. So, getting back to Oxford game. I mean, Ryan, bearing in mind what happened uh, at Lincoln. I mean, I'm going to say weekend, but it was midweek, Tuesday. Would you be making any changes going into Oxford game? I don't know, mate. Uh, maybe... Maybe Teddy Chin for call. That's mm. the only thing, maybe. But other than that, no, because we, like it, it, it weren't brilliant, was it? But I think I think there were quite a few players off 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 form. Uh, you know that were that even Connell didn't have a great game um, on Tuesday mm. night. So no, no, I thought leave things as they are pretty much. Other than maybe maybe drop call off for um, for, for Teddy. But other than other than that, I'd. Leave it as it is. Leave it as it is. I wouldn't cool. be bothered if he leaves calling. To be fair, it just it just right. weren't in the race as well. We as a, as a team pretty much on Tuesday, so can't drop everybody. <laughs> no, no, uh, yeah, fair point. I mean, Daniel, before I come to you, I mean, 
I know we started, he looked frustrated. He didn't look happy when he came off. I, you know, you always like to see that. I play, don't want to come off. But would you start with the same side or like what uh, Ryan's just said there, possibly Tedic in? Uh, what what would you uh, take on that, be, mate? Yeah, I think he's starting to get a bit more interest in the Tedic debate, isn't it? Um, it's going on more and more as weeks go on. He started against Forest Green, he scores, comes on against Wickham, he scores. Hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd lead the rest of the team, but I'm, I'm with Ryan. I think the big debate is, is it's a dilemma going into playoffs, is it with Slobban Tedic? Because as he came on, yeah, he came on against Wickham and scored, but I just think he's a bit more, I don't know, I want to see him start. I want to see mm. him being given that chance. If he I'll starts I'll the game, one, Since we're on about Tedic now, I'll, I'll ask you both, because it seems to be a good debate, this. On Tedic, do you think he offers that bit more presence up front as in closing down and holding ball up and trying to bring others into it? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I think he holds the ball up really well. That's what I like. That's, that's, that was my thought process because I thought, that's when I thought, again, on Tuesday night, I thought if it had brought Tedic on and taken call off and leave no one on, you know, Tedic holding it up or getting them get you know, getting them flick-ons, he's really strong. He backs into defenders and he holds it up and he can, you know, maybe get that flick-on for Norwood running on. Because Norwood makes them runs. He's got them really intelligent yeah. runs, isn't it? Mm-hmm. So I think, why not? Why not? Yeah, um, and he's he's massive. You know, he's tall as well. So you know, if it's set pieces against maybe a side like Oxford where confidence is low, and he's get quick it in as well. Yeah, he's a quick player. Um, he's very quick and he's strong and he, and he does close down like mad. I think them two, you know, Cole does in bursts, but he doesn't do he doesn't do it all the time. Hmm. He doesn't do it all the time. Yeah, I, I I think that's the that's the thing, and it, it, I think I can see where Duff's coming from. He says the right we're going to play with two strikers. Norwood's the one that closes down, and Cole gets behind the back line, right? Mm. Which Cole you can't knock him has done fantastic at that this season. You don't score yeah. as many goals mm. as he has. We are doing we are doing a good job at that. Mm. The only thing is, is that Ted H, we've got him on a loan from Manchester City in order for him to develop. We must have seen something in him to get him on loan at Manchester City. Duff saying we've seen him, he's worked so hard in gym since he's come back from injury. No. Surely, if we try and give him one of them, just give him a couple of games where we say, right, that is your role, right? You're going to try and do what Cole does and get him behind. Not this stopping up that ball, this in, not trying to take ball down and replace Norwood at half-time. We want you to try and get behind those back line because I think from what you can see from him, he's got the pace mm. to do it. Mm. Just mm. needs a little bit, maybe just a little bit of confidence, get like a little bit of confidence. But we've seen that in, in playoffs or in, in any cup, cup competitions, when you come into those big games, sometimes you need to give those defenders. As we know, the, uh, as we know there's, you know... The, and the amount of analysis or analysis they have in sports now, where you know Bolton's going to want it, or it would be Bolton or any at playoff size, they're probably already doing their research on us and saying, yeah, right, they're going to play like this. Devante is going to play like this. Number nine, Norwood, he's going to play like this. They're going to try and set up like it. So getting Ted H a bit of a chance and a bit of an option to make those runs in behind and change, adapt his game a little bit. That could be the difference where we catch teams off their off guard. Yeah. It's something to think about. Now, if you give them two games and you don't look good, then maybe mm. you know it's it weren't to be. But I'd say give the lad a chance starting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I agree with that. Yeah, uh, what I've seen when he when he's come off the bench or when he started, uh, I think Dave called it out a couple of weeks ago against Forest Green. He started just what what you've been saying there. The old ball up your of that bit and he's end up scoring and like I think what you both said and Daniel as well like is that confidence you know lad will get confidence with it you if you're you're only going to get confidence if you're playing game time if you play regular game time it's going to come to you uh, Ryan I mean been on, just been on about confidence and you know it's going to be like it could be an important player for his already doing you know other teams doing their own work on us in playoffs coming on to Oxford game always going to be a standout player for and score, what was going to be standout play? Was, was going to make the the difference for us against Oxford? To like I said, do you know what we could uh, I, do, a, do a job on them? Yeah, personally, I think not James Norwood myself. James, I think he got he got took off Tuesday night, and I think he's going to have a point to prove. 
Don't put more fire in his belly. Yeah, if he needs it, a bit of fire in his belly. <laughs> he doesn't. He doesn't need much, does it, lad? No. no. I think I just. Uh, I, I think he's brilliant, man. I love him. I think he's absolutely. He's, he's been an absolutely fantastic signing, Noah. Um, yeah. Not just because he's, he's not. A, he's not being prolific with his goals, but he offers so much more than goals. Does does Noah? Yeah, his sure. experience, his closing down, his ability. Yeah. His you know, his, te- his his little tactics that he gets up to <laughs> that referee don't see. He's, he's, he's a master at in it. But I just think I think yeah I think you know we've seen him go off choosing eight. We're we're a bit upset, you know, which is good to see because it's obviously he wanted to stay on. I think he's mm. going to have a point to prove, and um, yeah, I think he might be the danger man and bag a couple. No, I would. Okay, okay, Daniel. Um, I think no, I would. I think Phillips, um, but I do think I think Kane's got. So I think Kane's Kane's got still something to prove. I think. I think mm. Kane's got. He's got to be putting in them, putting in some. Performances, I think. I think he is going to get it first team, but after, he's going to get it first team. It ropes to playoffs and, and probably in playoffs. But I just want to see him. I want to see him just a bit run, run a bit more, put a bit more intensity in there, taking some shots outside box and just trying to try to just test defenders. Really, um, mm. I think. I don't know. I think against Lincoln, he, he didn't look. He looked like he was kind of fearful of getting ball I and. Mean, and not having that time on ball, and when they were trying to trying to when Link were trying to press him, and so maybe just trying to allow him to send a bit more space. But that's what I'd like to see from that's what I'd like to see. But what I think the key players are going to be is probably Phillips and Norwood tomorrow. Yeah, that's uh, options. I mean, they've already scored. They've only scored two in two in the last five. Uh, mm. and, I'd, I, again, I, I don't want to sound any disrespect towards Oxford, but you know, this is a time for us to get some goals. I think yeah. it, it, this is a good time for us to put in a dominant performance and get some of that confidence that we might have been lost at Lincoln and try it. And, and so, no one's yeah. going to really, no one in Devante need to be on top form and showing what they can do. Yeah, good points. Needed for Tuesday uh, night, don't we? So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, I, yeah, yeah. Just yeah, just go in with that. What uh, Ryan, uh, what Ryan was saying off of what Daniel was saying is like trying to get some goals without being disrespectful to Oxford, but trying to get some goals, put in a dominant performance, and gives that bit of I want to say we've got confidence here, but just that bit of uh, mentality is in mindset. Right, we can do this. Let's move into it. Like, another quick game at Oakwell. Let's get, uh, get them on bounce, kind of thing, and. I get where you're coming from. Um, I think it's going to be attacking options. I'm, I'm hoping that Luke O'Connell can like get back to it because he looked a bit off it. Uh, Lincoln, yeah. it won't on his own. for other players as well, granted. But I think you're needing something to get creative. You need something to happen, uh, whether it be set piece corner, uh, even if it's picking up front ball from midfield and playing a, a pass through uh, for such as like a Phillips. Um, Tedich, if he starts to hold it up and bring us over into, over into others into play. So I'm going Luke Connell, but I get where you're coming from Adam Phillips and Norwood and his attacking options. I think is defensively what uh I know like uh Laresh is pa- uh, part on uh, left hand side because Cadden's still out I think it's his last game I believe. Yes. So yeah. it, sh- it should be in contention for Ipswich game. So I'm going I'm going with I probably jinx it now but I can't see Oxford really causing any problems but we still need to be switched on which I think the will be so I'm looking for further upfield what we, we need to impose this game onto Oxford and stop them being some kind of a threat uh and take it to them. I'm going score prediction I'm gonna go I'm gonna go four out uh I just think that I'm I'm going four and out clean sheet I think and it'd be a, a statement to put down marker and I think it's imperative that we can get a quick goal um and then take it on from there and going for an out. Uh Ryan. I was gonna say exactly the same as then now. I'm gonna say four, right. four nil in here. So yeah, I think four now. I think if we go get if we go get a decent first goal early on, we'll 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 white flow him. White flow him four now. We aren't trying to be disrespectful, is it? But, no, yeah. You know, you're looking at stats, you're looking at what's done, yeah. The alone confidence that like they're winning 17. These are the games where we need to be asserting his dominance, especially with Ben at Oakwell as well. 
Yeah. Cool. Uh, no disrespect to Oxford. You know, Oxford fans like us know your comments. You probably agree or disagree. If I were an Oxford game, I'd be saying what you've been drinking. Yeah, I'm going to disagree. We're going to wipe for you, four and out. But when you look at table and look at stats, four and out, four and out. Yeah. You know, Daniel, coming to you, mate. Uh, yeah. Um, I think I, I think Oxford had a lot of problems off at pitch, um, and I don't think the Oxford fans are particularly happy with the way this season's gone. I think club of their calibre should be doing a lot better. Yeah. And I don't yeah. think that's down at you can't say that sometimes necessarily down at um down at players, it can be down from clubs' executives, and I think there's a lot of criticisms about them as well. So uh yeah. um, and we all know how that one feels, so I'll stand with any Oxford fan who uh, who who's uh, who's feeling that at the moment. But yeah, I think it's this is a game we need to be certain of dominance. I want to see a bit more defense, uh, defense, uh, defensive dom- dominance. They are going to try and going to try and come out. They're fighting for the lives. Mm. If I want a long, there's a long ball going forward and it beats back line. I want somebody covering. I want Mads and Bobby to be making those runs behind, making those runs after him and blocking ball and showing that sort of dominance that way. So I'm going to go. I'm going to be a bit more. Pessimistic and go for two nil, two mm. nil, but a dominant performance. I think that's dominant what I performance, want. Yeah, yeah, clean yeah. sheet and dominant performance, two nil. Yeah, so yeah. Clean, clean, clean clean it's going to be goals. We're going to win. So that's main mm. main thing that we're going to win. Um, and yeah, go, I think we've covered it all. Um, again, people that's watching, let us know your comments. You know, would you make any changes? Is it going to be you know a win? Is it going to be a com- comfortable win? Is it going to be a dominant performance? I think we're all looking for it uh, to be moving into the next few games coming up, uh, especially at home Tuesday against uh, Ipswich as well. So a lot's going to be riding on that as well. Potential people call them six-pointers, but it could be fetch them down, set a few jitters in, you never know. Did it to Wednesday, well, what happened there? So it come off at rail a bit for them. So, yeah, uh, Daniel and Ryan, appreciate you. Thanks for taking your time out and joining. Some great talk and good, some great debates as well. A uh, lot to ponder and think about there. So... Yeah, uh, thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share. Go into well, make some noise. Uh, one thing left to say: you reds. <laughs>